Let's talk about z-scores. So z-scores are a measure of relative standing. Uh, they are, um, in the book makes a big deal about how they can be used for detecting outliers, but outliers and detect, you know, removal of data isn't something that uh, I particularly am interested in schooling you guys on at this level. We're just getting used to it. And, and removing data should always be done with extreme caution. So uh, the rule of thumb they say is that Z-scores can be used to do it. I'll talk about it. But I think Z-scores are much more useful for uh, basically standardizing data for comparability purposes. So ultimately, all a Z-score is is a measure of how many standard deviations away from the mean a particular value is. So uh, you can see the formula for a z-score. So to convert from x to z, you say z is equal to x minus. Now, the book uses sample terms, uh, but I prefer using the population ones. Again, we're not going to make too much. We're, you're not, there's not going to be a system where you, a situation where you're going to be required to distinguish between them. Uh, you can basically always think of it as x uh, you know, the data set, the data minus its average divided by the standard deviation. This is for population for sample. It's X minus X bar divided by S, but it's always the data minus its average divided by the standard deviation. And that gives us a ratio of how many standard deviations from the mean uh, the particular value is. And this can be useful uh, basically for comparability purposes. So as an example, Let's pretend there are two students who took Statistics 100 different classes, though. They took different classes, and they both got 70, right? They each got a 70. Uh, so you're like, okay, did, but did again, they got the same grade, but does it represent the same performance amongst the class? So if we say student 1 here, or student A, uh, they got a 70, but their class average was uh, 63 and their standard devi class standard deviation was 4.5. And this one who got 70, their class average was uh, 61, but their standard deviation uh, was 5. Point, uh, two, Sure. So what we can do is we can use this for comparison, right? So we can use, do this by converting these x's into z's to standardize them. And this is something we're going to use much more heavily. This The z scores and this particular format is going to come into a big play when we get into um, uh, inferential statistics. But for now, just know that a z score is a measure of relative standing. So uh, the z score for this student x, their x is 70, minus their average, which is 63, divided by their standard deviation, which is 4.5. So z is equal to uh, 70 minus 63 divided by 4.5. 70 divided minus 63 is 7. 7 divided by 4.5 is a number I am not prepared to do in my head. So 7 divided by 4.5 is 1.555, going on forever, right? It's equal to 1.5. So student A has a z-score of 1.5. Student B, on the other hand, and we do, I'll just label them as A and B just for difference. Uh, their z-score, again, it's x, their value, right, their grade, 70, minus the average, which is 61, divided by the standard deviation, which is 5.2. So 70 minus 61 is 9, uh, divided by 5.2. So 9 divided by 5.2 is 1.7. Three, uh, zero, seven, blah, 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 blah. But again, one point, uh, one point seven 
is bigger than 1.5. So student B, their score is higher, is more standard deviations above the mean than uh, student A's. So we would say their relative standing is higher. Now, Z scores can be negative. If your X is below average, you're going to have a negative Z score, and that happens. Um, and generally, uh, Z scores, the Z score can be zero when, you're, when your score is at, at equal to the mean. Uh, there's zero standard deviations from the mean, so that's where it is. Uh, but it can be negative and it can be positive. And the bigger it is, the further away from, uh, the more standard deviations it is from the mean, which it means the more uh, unlikely or more uh, notable right? Exemplary, like the more, you know, the more special it is, it is extraordinarily high, or if it's negative, extraordinarily low. Now, this is why they use it for outliers, because uh, if you know anything about Chebyshev's rule, and I mean, it is testable material, but we're not going to get too much into it. Uh, Chebyshev's rule tells us that uh, most of date, most uh, data is going to be within two standard deviations of the mean. So three standard deviations from the mean is usually kind of a conventional um, uh, uh, benchmark to be like, oh, that's 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 unlikely, an extraordinary value, and that's the value they use, right? So either three or minus three, if it's bigger than three or smaller than minus three, uh, those values tend to can sometimes be used to indicate outliers. Again, that's really not the philosophy I want us to take in this class, uh, but I just thought I would mention it because the the book talks about it. So. Uh, if you have any questions about Z scores, make sure you know how to get a hold of me in the forums. Uh, take care.